On December 7, 1941, the attack of Pearl Harbor was initiated, changing America forever. Not only did the attack by the Japanese force America to take part in the conflict known today as World War II, but it also caused conflict within America. Since fear coursed through Americans after the attack, people of Japanese ancestry were subject to racial prejudice. It was believed that any Japanese Americans in the government, military, or new media may potentially take part in sabotage or espionage. I was uh, sitting in the living room of my house in East Los Angeles uh, trying to get psyched up to do my homework for the following day uh, for classes. Then I heard this hysterical announcement over the radio that Japanese planes had bombed Pearl Harbor. On December 7, 1941, Japan, like its infamous Axis partners, struck first and declared war afterwards. Of course, the fact that my parents were Japanese immediately made me very uncomfortable. This is a terrible, terrible shock. And immediately, war is declared because now a direct strike has been taken against the American people. There was mass hysteria against Japanese. Japanese Americans were charged as saboteurs and uh, as collaborators of the enemy. They were tarred with the same brush that condemned Imperial Japan. Japanese Americans were considered enemy aliens. There's a massive wave of anti-Japan and anti-Japanese feelings throughout the United States, really. The Japanese are not easy to know. I've lived among them for 10 years, and I can testify that they are as different from ourselves as any people on this planet. Well, after Pearl Harbor, on December 7th, they surrounded Japanese town with the army with their rifles pointing in. Things became very uncomfortable if you were of Japanese ancestry. The music used to be playing Japanese songs all the time. And so when you walked down the street, you always heard music. All the music stopped after December 7th. And shortly after that, the curfews started, which limited how far we could travel. Rumors were just flying all over Japanese town. But they were going to put us in these camps. They were going to separate the families. In fact, the worst rumor was they may even kill some of the people. I was worried about the consequences of the prejudice being expressed, you know, and violence toward us and so forth, uh, with absolutely no idea what could happen. But there was just this feeling that something was going to happen to us as a racial group. A movement emerges which finally results in an executive order issued by President Roosevelt to remove Japanese immigrants and American citizens of Japanese descent from wherever they are on the West Coast and remove them to what are known as relocation camps in the interior of the United States. These are armed, um, locked military encampments guarded by the American military to which people are forcibly removed. Shortly after Pearl Harbor, you know, there are thousands of Japanese American guys already in the military and uh, a lot of them just simply got kicked out. Those who were served in the interior of the United States, they were okay. They continued to serve. Those who serve on the west coast of the United States uh, were, uh, were discharged from the military and uh, they were sent home and all of them were, were given draft classification 4C, for Charlie. And draft classification 4C is designated for enemy alien unfit for military duty. If I may editorialize, how insulting, you know, can that be to an American citizen? Uh, we were under protective custody for 40 days. 
and many of my friends were discharged from the army at the convenience of the government, and they were sent back, and uh, they were under executive order 9066. Many of them went home, helped their families back, and went to camp with them. And then, despite that, when the call came for volunteers for the 442nd, this, they were among the first to stand up and join. It was said that within hours of the attack, FBI agents were sweeping California, Oregon, Washington, and Hawaii for the Japanese Americans. They arrested anyone of Japanese descent. The FBI focused on community leaders, teachers of the language, teachers of Japanese culture, and teachers of the martial arts. However, this was only the beginning for the Japanese Americans. On February 1942, President D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, authorizing the movement of Japanese Americans to military areas, removing anyone who might threaten the war effort. This changed the lives of 120,000 innocent of Japanese Americans. Those being removed were allowed only a few days to decide what to do with everything they owned, their houses, their farms, their businesses, and other possessions. Most of the families would have to sell many of their belongings and prized possessions for an embarrassingly low price. In fact, sometimes people would just abandon their homes and shops, which they have owned for many years with the door left wide open. Families were herded onto trains buses and trucks to a location which they did not know where it was. Although they were all American citizens, they were treated like criminals and were transported under military guard through 17 temporary assembly centers located at racetracks, fairgrounds, and other facilities in states such as California, Arizona, Oregon, and Washington. Thousands of people with Japanese ancestry were moved to relocation centers which were made just within a year. The act that allowed this relocation was passed in February 1942. The relocation was completed the same year in November. In March 1942, the first Japanese Americans arrived at Manzanar, the War Relocation Authority, or WRA, took custody of the Manzanar operation from the U.S. Army. Manzanar was a 500-acre section of land surrounded by barbed wire and guard towers with searchlights.